close to the consistency of a toothpaste. Okay? And it's very important that it's uniform, that you don't have dry chunks with uh, uh, moist material surrounding it. So it will take you a little time to reach that consistency. Depends on the plasticity of the material. Um, the more plastic the material, so the more clean it, the harder it is because it will take uh, absorb water more readily, but it takes longer time. Uh, this material has been already prepared um, to remove the coarse component of the material which ASTM requires in the method and uh, it's mostly uh, sand, silt and clay that we're dealing with in here. So you can see the material is sticky. While you are mixing this, it's very important you observe how uniform. If we take a close-up, you can see here there's some drier spots and there's some shiny spots which are more wet. All of that, when you're ready to test it, it should be all one. It should be consistent, uh, the material throughout. And by feel, you can also tell, because with the spatula, when you're mixing it, you can feel that the material has uniform consistency. The idea here is to spread the material onto the cap. Try not to leave any air pockets inside it. So, and also spread it out in a horizontal uh, surface. So after having gone through a, a few paper towels, this is our test uh, uh, device and the condition. If I tilt it, you can see that the soil is going to end up in a horizontal um, surface. We're going to zero the counter by turning this, all the revolutions until we get to the eight, nine, and all the zeros right there. So that's going to be our counter. Uh, we're going to cut a groove through the soil, starting right here in the center of these two screws in one shot directly. So by going in a straight line, continuous one shot. This was probably, I'm going to have to redo that because it didn't turn uh, very smooth. You can see this is what happens if you don't have uh, uniform materials. I have some material here that is drier than other pockets. So the material requires, requires a little more mixing, which we will do.
it's not bad. You got that one? So we have uh, cut a groove and we can see through the chin on the metal. Uh, the idea here is we're going to zero uh, the counter and we're going to start counting the number of revolutions that it takes for that gap to close for a distance of half an inch. So the procedure is to turn it two revolutions per second approximately steady and the counter is going to take care of the numbers. So here we go. We're starting to see the gap closing right there. We have closed the gap by about half an inch and that's the distance I'm talking about where the bottom of that groove has closed. So this would be exactly 10 counts for that moisture content. So uh, having done the liquid limit, as you can appreciate, it can be a messy type of uh, test, but it's really important that you take care of the equipment uh, when you're done and you uh, clean the material right then, because if you leave this sitting the next day, this is going to be hard like a rock and it's going to be a lot more difficult to, um, to clean. Again, where the, when you're done with all the testing, the material, the equipment should look in the same condition that you found it uh, when you started the testing. We get rid of the uh, soil portion as much as possible as a solid waste and only after we have cleaned the solid waste out of the way this material will go into the sink.